for joining us for Journey Kids. We are so excited to have some worship, play some games, and have some fun activities later. Don't forget to go online to our website with your parents to find the parent guide. All right, we're ready for some worship. Let's do it. Bye. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about friendship. When we take a look at one of the most important things to keep a great friend. This episode of Story Lab is now in session. Hey, I'm Sebastian. And I'm Skylar. We're talking about friendship. And what is friendship, Sebastian? It's using your words and actions to show others you care, Skylar. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. I win? <laughs> yes, go me! What did I win for? I mean, all I did was define friendship. Anyone who can be a good friend is winning. So, do I win anything? Well, I was thinking, how about you win the amazing opportunity to decide what we're doing today? Wait, I thought you were supposed to figure that out. I got as far as this pickle jar and then I got stuck. Look, I was really tired, and then I decided to Google, and then I got totally sidetracked by a cat video, and I'm really sorry, can you please forgive me? Stop right there. I need to fully take in this moment. What? The moment where you don't have everything completely perfect and put together. Mountaintop experience, huh? It's 
amazing. Okay, now you've had your little moment. Can you help us out with a situation that does not feel very harmony us? Trust me, my friend, I am hatching a plan. <laughs> Good. What is it? Oh, I remember doing this a lot as a kid. Tapping on a jar filled with brine? More or less. So, let's make it. Should I pour this out? Nope, keep that jar right there. Okay, yes sir. What are we doing? Step one, line up seven clear jars. It's easier if they're all the same size. Step two, fill the first jar just below the rim. <coughs> what about the others? Oops, need more water. <coughs> okay, I'm back, okay. So, the second jar gets about a quarter cup less. Hey, what happened to my water? Oh, um, sorry, I, I didn't realize it mattered exactly You drank the experiment? I was thirsty after all those pickles! You do the rest. Sorry, okay, how much? Just a quarter cup less in each jar. I'll go get more water. Are we ready? You know, it should be possible to complete a scientific experiment without food coloring. Possible, yes. Fun, no. You don't have to add rainbow food coloring, but it can help you remember which note is which. See, we already have a green. You wanna tell everyone what we have here? This, my friends, is a water xylophone. <laughs> so cool. Can I try? I won't mess it up anymore. Promise. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, it's your birthday? In like seven months. <laughs> you play something. Is that Ode to Joy? I'm impressed! <laughs> okay, do it. I'm not sure if that was harmony. <laughs> but it was fun. Does that mean you forgive me for messing things up? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Which reminds me, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Colossians. Colossians is one of 21 letters in the New Testament, written by the leaders of the early church to new Jesus followers. The apostles wanted everyone to know about the radical new way Jesus wants us to live. In the Roman Empire, people like women, children, poor people, and enslaved people were viewed as worthless, with no hope of something better. But within the church, all people were viewed as equal because the believers knew that God loves everyone but the Apostle Paul heard that some false teachers were spreading lies about who Jesus is and what it means to follow him. So Paul wrote a special letter to set the record straight. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Padma. The Apostle Paul was pretty upset when he discovered false teachers were spreading lies about Jesus. So, even though he was under house arrest at the time, he wrote a letter to remind them of the truth. The Son is the exact likeness of God who can't be seen. The Son is first and he is over all creation. Paul made it clear Jesus shares God's power and that it's only through following Jesus that we can live a life pleasing to God. Toward the end of the letter, Paul got down to the nitty gritty of what that looks like. Put up with one another. Forgive one another if you are holding something against someone. Forgive, just as the Lord forgave you. Short and sweet, huh? But wow, there's a lot packed inside. First off, put up with one another. That means treating each other with kindness, even if your friend doesn't agree with you about everything. 
let's be real. People are going to do and say things that bug you, even your friends. If you turn your back on everyone that annoys you, you're going to be awfully lonely. Now, let's take a look at the second part of the verse. Forgive one another if you're holding something against someone. Okay, let's say you're in PE class and your friend picked someone else for the team when you thought they should have picked you. At first, it just bugs you a little, like a pebble that got stuck in your shoe. But after you think about it for a little, what your friend did seems to get bigger and bigger and heavier until it's like a giant weight that you're carrying. As long as you keep thinking about it and holding on to that weight, it will get between you and your friend. In fact, if you don't let it go, you may lose your friend altogether. Not only that, but holding on to this heavy weight takes up all your energy for doing other things too. Thankfully, God made a way for us to let go of whatever we're holding against our friends or anyone else. Paul wrote in his letter to the Romans, but here is how God has shown his love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God did not wait for us to get our act together before coming to rescue us. Instead, Jesus chose to give up his life for us while we were still a mess. God moved first to make a way for us to be forgiven. And because of that, we don't need to demand that someone else get it right before we choose to forgive. When you choose to forgive, it's like you're letting go of that huge, heavy weight, and there's a much better chance that your friendship can be repaired. Now, forgiving a friend does not mean that what they did was okay, or that you have to let them keep hurting you. It simply means that you're leaving room for God to make things right. You don't have to carry around that heavy weight anymore. When you choose to forgive your friends, you may find that they're more ready to forgive you too. Let's see our verse all together again. Put up with one another, forgive one another if you're holding something against someone. Forgive just as the Lord forgave you. Paul went on to write, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts as parts of one body you were appointed to live in peace. We can only live in true peace and friendship with others when we make the choice to let go and forgive. The end. Wow, uh, that's a hard one. Yeah, I mean, I hardly ever feel like forgiving. It's easier to keep focusing on how someone has wronged me. That's right. Forgiveness has to be a choice. So what's our part in the story? Paul wanted the Colossians to see just how important Jesus is. And when you're following Jesus, it becomes easier to show love to others. Like through forgiveness. Exactly. And it's often the people we're closest to and love most that hurt us, even if they don't mean to. People like our friends and family. One of the best ways to maintain your relationship is to be quick to forgive. Like if you feel like one of your friends is ignoring you, you can forgive. If a friend says something hurtful to you, you can forgive. If your friend crashed your new bike, you can forgive. Exactly. You should never let someone keep hurting you, but in many cases, forgiveness can be the glue that helps friends stick together. All you have to do is let it go, let it go. If your friends start singing overdone musical numbers, you can forgive. I think you've got it. See you next time. Bye. Bye. So here's the thing. Friends forgive one another. Thanks for forgiving me and for figuring out our experiment. Anytime. No! We're supposed to put up with each other, right? I'm not sure that includes Baby Shark. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. No, 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 no Baby Shark.